Hello 12th graders and welcome to this lecture which will be a revision worksheet in the theme of social media. We will start as usual by reading the blurb here. <coughs> in the reading selection, the writer communicates what he has learned from getting the news via print papers over a period of two months. Via means through. Okay. Read the selection carefully and then work out the activities that follow. Breaking up with breaking news by Farhad Manju. Paragraph one, I first got the news of the school shooting via an alert on my watch. However, for much of the next day after the alert, I heard almost nothing about the shooting. There was a lot I was glad to miss. For instance, I did not see the false claims that the killer was from the Middle East. I missed the Fox News report trying, tying him to a resistance group abroad even before his name had even been released. I also did not see the claim circulated on Twitter that the massacre had been the 18th school shooting of the year, which was not true. Okay, as revealed in paragraph one, we already see that the author here in this the, in this article is going to criticize the fast and uh, crude news through social media. He got the news uh, through his watch. It was a buzz on his smartwatch and apparently it turned out uh, to be news filled with misinformation. The first thing that they did was that they said the killer was a terrorist from the Middle East, etc. And so um, he was glad that he had missed part of this, this news because it contained so much misinformation. Okay, and when we say misinformation, we mean wrong information. Moving on, paragraph two. Instead, the day after the shooting, a friendly person dropped off three newspapers at my front door. That morning, I spent maybe 40 minutes poring over the horror of the shooting and a million other things the newspaper had to tell me. Not only had I spent less time with the story than I had followed along as it unfolded online, but I also was better informed. Because I had avoided the innocent mistakes and the more malicious misdirection that has pervaded the first hours after the shooting, my first experience of the news was an accurate account of the actual events of the day. So obviously what we learn from paragraph two is that the author's attitude uh, was positive towards the news he received uh, through the newspaper because it was much better informing for him. Paragraph three, this has been my life for nearly two months. In January, after the breaking newsiest year in recent memory here, it's a term that shows how many breaking news uh, there were during that year. In recent memory, I decided to travel back in time. Okay, here, this is a figure of speech. Of course, he didn't really travel back in time, but what did he do? I turned off my digital news notifications, unplugged from Twitter and other social net networks, and subscribed to home delivery of three print newspapers. Okay, as we all know, newspapers are about to become extinct nowadays. Several um, prominent newspapers in the world, and especially in Lebanon, have uh, stopped printing altogether because people are no longer holding the newspaper and reading. They want this fast news that buzzes into their phone. Okay, and it's usually, according to the author, full of misinformation and unedited as it should be. Paragraph four, it has been life changing. Turning off the buzzing breaking news machine I carry in my pocket was like freeing myself from a monster who had me on speed dial, always ready to break into my day with half baked bulletins. Now, I am not just less anxious and addicted to the news, but also better and more widely informed. Okay, so according to him, getting news through the newspaper made him better informed. Okay, getting news only from print newspapers may be extreme and probably not for everyone, but the experiment here, getting news through, uh, through the newspaper and not through social media, has taught me a lesson about the pitfalls of digital news and how to avoid them. Paragraph five, 
I know what you're thinking. There is much to hate about print. The pages are too big, the type is too small, and the ink is too messy. Compared with a smartphone, a newspaper is more of a hassle to consult on the go. However, print presents news print presents news what what you get online is not quite news it is more like a never ending stream of commentary one that does not does more to distort your understanding of the world than to illuminate it so it's not giving you any illumination any new uh, it's not enlightening you, but misinforming you. On social net networks, every news story comes to you pre-digested. Okay, they've already digested the news for you. People do not just post stories, they post their take on stories, often quoting key parts of a story to delve into the story to come up with their own views. So according to him, it is biased, making them susceptible to misinformation. Paragraph 6. Real life is slow. It takes professionals time to figure out what has happened. So, okay, a bombing takes place. Social media networks in less than 30 seconds have spread thousands and thousands and thousands of pieces of news when they haven't even investigated. Look at how much there will be. Uh, misinformation due to this fast, crude, unedited news. Smartphones and social networks are giving us facts about the news much faster than we can make sense of them, letting speculation and misinformation fill the gap. Now, after something breaks, we are all buzzed with the alert, often before most of the facts are in. Okay, this is what we just talked about. This is the surprise blessing of a newspaper. I was getting news a day old, but in the delay between when the news happened and when it showed up on my front door, hundreds of experienced professionals had done hard work to make sure the news is accurate. Okay, this is the key word here. News through social media, according to the author, is not accurate at all. That said, you do not need to read a print newspaper to get this. You can create your own new ritual by looking at a news app once a day or listening to a daily news podcast. Finally, paragraph 7. My recent experiment has taught me that newspapers are not perfect, but social media outlets are definitely so bad. Okay, even though newspapers are not perfect... Okay, nothing's perfect, yet social media outlets are horrible. The built-in incentives on Twitter and Facebook, for instance, reward speed over depth. It's important to give the news fast than to delve whether this news is accurate, whether it's correct. So hot takes over facts and propagandists over well-meaning analyzers of news. You do not have to read a print newspaper to get a better relation with the news. But for goodness sake, listen to the author here, for goodness sake, please stop getting your news mainly from Twitter, Facebook, and the likes. In the long run, you and everyone else will be better off. So we see the kind of note that the author ended with. He doesn't like news through social media at all. He's very critical of it. And he's advising people to do as he did and get uh, their news from print newspapers. Now let's move on to the first part uh, of our exercises. A, answer each question in two or three complete sentences using your own words. One, two, three, four. I'm going to go through each one in detail with you. Let's start with number one. With reference to paragraphs one and two displayed here for you, list three benefits the writer has obtained from reading about the school shooting from print newspapers. Uh, let's uh, take a look again at paragraph one where he said that he received the news uh, on his watch, but he didn't take a, a thorough look at it. He missed the Fox News report tying the, the, the criminal to a resistance group abroad. 
He also did not see the claim circulated on Twitter that the massacre had been the 18th school shooting of the year, which was also a misinformation. It was not true. So this was a benefit. He didn't take a look at the at the news thoroughly that buzzed into his watch. Also in paragraph two, instead, the day after the shooting, a friendly person dropped off three newspapers at my front door. So where did he really get the news from? From those newsprint printed newspapers. He read them thoroughly and he got all the information he needed. So answer, three benefits that the writer got from reading about the school shooting uh, from print newspaper were, first, he did not see the false claims that the killer was from the Middle East. He missed the Fox News report tying him to a resistance group abroad, even before his name had even been released. And he also did not see the claims circulated on Twitter that the massacre had been the 18th school shooting of the year, which was not true. Therefore, he was much better informed about the incident. Okay, moving on to number two. In reference to paragraphs three and four, why does the writer resort to reading newspapers? Why? Let's take a look at paragraph three. This has been my life for nearly two months. Okay, so when he wrote the article, he had been reading those newspapers for two months. In January, after the breaking newsiest year in recent memory, I decided to travel back in time. We talked about that. Um, I turned off my digital news notification, unplugged from Twitter and other social networks, and subscribed to home delivery of three print newspapers. Paragraph four. Okay, turning, so turning off the buzzing breaking news machine I carry in my pocket was like freeing myself from a monster. So this is one reason why he, he resorted to reading newspapers. Now I am not just less anxious and addicted to the news, but also better and more widely informed. Getting news only from print newspapers may be extreme and probably not for everyone, but the experiment has taught me a lesson about the pitfalls of digital news and how to avoid them. So he feels or the author feels that he is not just less anxious and addicted to the news, but also better and more widely informed. Okay. Question number three. According to the text, is it easy or difficult to pass on fake news through social media? Justify. Yes, according to the text, it's very easy to pass on fake news because anyone can post just anything they want without supervision or editing. As we said, the importance for these social media media platforms, as the author said, is, you know, uh, speed over content. They don't care whether it's well edited, whether it's uh, as accurate as it should be, but they want things delivered very fast. So generally not well supervised and generally not well edited. Paragraph four, in two to three sentences, from your own experience, so this is an opinion question, an evaluation question. What is your opinion about news you receive through social media? What's your attitude towards news you receive through social media? How credible can this news be? And again, credible means believable. I gave you my suggested answer here, and of course you guys might have very different opinions. But according to me, in my opinion, even though social media is a very fast source of news where you receive any breaking news instantly with a buzz on your phone or any other tech device, this type of quick news can carry a lot of misinformation. My attitude is very similar to that uh, of the author. Since it is sometimes unedited and written according to the whims of a certain person, he wants you to uh, maybe uh, embrace his or her opinion, okay? That person wants you to embrace their opinion, okay? If you want to receive a credible type of news from social media, I'm not totally against it, but if you want to receive a credible type of social uh, media news, you should only visit credible and trusted sites. 
they do exist, okay? Uh, but uh, you should be careful how to filter the type of news that you watch or uh, read on social media networks. Moving on to organizational skills questions. Number one, identify the pattern of organization in paragraph three and justify your choice. Paragraph three. This has been my life for nearly two months. Let's take a look at the clues here. There's a time expression here. In January, another time expression. After the breaking newsiest year in recent memory, I decided to travel back in time. Another time or chronological uh, order word. I turned off my digital news notification. Yet we notice another pattern here. I turned off my digital news notification, unplugged from Twitter and other social networks, and subscribed to home delivery of three print newspapers. So here there are two types of patterns. Any one you choose uh, of those will be correct. So I'm not asking you to give me two patterns of organization. And generally, when I give you this question, there is one very clear um, pattern of organization. But here two answers are possible and it could happen. First possible answer, the pattern of organization in paragraph three is one of time order or chronological order if you want. The author, now you need to justify from the choice of words, uses words like nearly two months in January to talk about what he was doing do, during that time concerning social media. Okay, this, then that, then that, okay? Or you could say the pattern of organization in paragraph three is one of listing. The author lists what he did in order not to listen to news through social media. He said, I turned off my digital news notifications, unplugged from Twitter and other social networks, and subscribed to home delivery of three newsprints. Both are perfectly correct. Okay, you can choose either one of them. Question number two, how is the title related to the text? Okay, this is generally um, a standard answer. All you have to do is write the main idea of your text. Here's how we answer such a question. The title, please write the title. The title breaking up with breaking news is a condensed summary of the main idea of the text, which was how the author stopped taking his news from social media sources and instead turned to home delivered newspapers. These, this idea or these ideas, you can say this idea, is fully elaborated or explained if you want in the body paragraphs okay condensed summary what is the title the title is the condensed summary of the whole text you can equally see say the title breaking up with breaking news is a reflection of the main idea of the text which was how the author stopped taking his news from social media sources and instead turned to home delivered newspapers. When you tell me it's a condensed summary or a reflection of the main idea, you need to tell me what that main idea is or you lose at least half of the mark on that uh, particular question. Okay. Number three, identify the thematic relation between paragraphs five and six. Support your answer with evidence. Paragraph five, paragraph six. Okay. I know what you're thinking. There is much to hate about print. The pages are too big, the type is too small, and the ink is too messy. Compared with a smartphone, a newspaper is more of a hassle to consult on the go. However, Print presents news. What you get online is not quite news. It is only, it is more, so here the author starts talking about news online. On social networks, every news story comes to you digested, pre-digested. People do not post stories, they post their take on the stories, meaning their opinion, often quoting key parts of a story to delve into the story to come up with their point of view. So it means they're biased and full of or susceptible to misinformation. Here he talks about, generally talks about news from social media. 
When we take a thorough look at paragraph six, real life is slow. It takes professionals time to figure out what has happened. Smartphones and social networks are giving us facts about the news much faster than we can make sense of them, letting speculation and misinformation fill the gap. Now, <clears throat> after something breaks, we are all buzzed, etc. I was getting news a days old when he started using newspapers, but in the delay between when the news happened and when it showed up on my front door, hundreds of experienced professionals, see how he's contrasting social media news and uh, news from newspaper, had done hard work to make sure the news is accurate. This was his main concern. The news on social media is full of misinformation. That said, you do not need to read a print newspaper to get this. You can create your own news ritual by looking at news app once a day or listening to a daily news podcast. So the answer, the thematic relationship between paragraphs five and six is one of idea contrast. In paragraph five, the author talks about how social media news comes to you fast and pre-digested. It might contain a lot of biases and misinformation. However, in paragraph six, the author talks about the professionalism of newspaper news. It is good for news to be one day old since it gives time for professionals to analyze what really went on and then write a credible piece of news. <clears throat> Question number four in organizational skills. Determine the writer's attitude towards social media outlets as indicated in paragraph seven. Illustrate. Now, when I say attitude, I also mean tone, okay? Let's read it and try to figure out what the author's tone or attitude is. My recent experiment has taught me that newspapers are not perfect, but social media outlets are definitely so bad. Take a look at this. So we already know the attitude here. It's very critical. Okay. The built-in incentives on Twitter and Facebook, for instance, reward speed over death, depth. So another criticism. So hot takes over facts and propagandists over well-meaning analyzers of news. You do not have to read a print newspaper to get a better relation with the news, but for goodness sake, look at what he's doing here. Another type of tone. Please stop getting your news mainly from Twitter, Facebook, and the likes. He's advising. That's another tone or attitude. In the long run, you and everyone else will be better off. Okay. The answer, the author's attitude towards social media outlets as revealed in paragraph seven is both critical and advising. First of all, he said that news through social media is definitely so bad. Quote some of his words, guys, in order to justify your choice. Definitely so bad. And this types type of news rewards speed over depth. In the second part of the paragraph, he advises people to stop taking their news from social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter, and they would be much better off. Okay, so this is a perfect answer. Now, uh, this brings us to our chart analysis question. Read it carefully, please. Read the instructions carefully. Examine the bar graph displaying the value of nine different platforms of social media. It's played here. Then explain what the figures show about people's preferences. Explain the significance of what people prefer among social media networks. Okay. So let's analyze it together before we begin answering. So this is Teenagers and young adults, okay, those are the youth. Snapchat at 79, Facebook 76, Instagram <coughs> 78, 
73, then you move on, Twitter much less at 40, Pinterest 31, Tumblr, WhatsApp, okay, and then LinkedIn at 9%. Per percent. So these are the nine different platforms. Of course, there, they, there are many others, but the author analyzed only those nine. So when we want to answer such a question, three parts to the answer. The main idea or the topic sentence taken directly from the title, your analysis and the conclusion. The main idea or the topic sentence, the bar graph depicts or shows, if you want, the reach of social media and networking sites used by teenagers and young adults in the United States as of February 2017. So this is not February, as of starting February 2017. Now the analysis, you need to put the numbers there. Snapchat, Snapchat is the most popular with a reach of 79%, followed by Facebook 76, Instagram 73, Twitter 40. Uh, this is not Twitter here. This is Pinterest at 31, okay? Pinterest at 31, Tumblr at 16, WhatsApp at 15, Music LY at 11, and finally LinkedIn being the least at 9%. Thus, we conclude that social media platforms have a far reach and are quite widespread among teens and young adults in the US with platforms like Snapchat, Facebook, and Instagram respectively consecutively meaning Snapchat being the most popular, being the most popular. This is, is how you analyze a chart. All right. Extracts. Directions. Each of the following sentences is the correct ending of one paragraph. Read each sentence carefully and then determine which paragraph it completes. Number one, for convenience, I have distilled those lessons in the three short instructions. Get news, do not hurry, and avoid social media. After writing the main idea of each paragraph next to it, while you are reading the text, it should be easy to figure out where each extract belongs, where it was taken from. Number two, what is important is choosing a type of media that highlights deep stories over quickly breaking ones. Where do you think this fits from the main idea? This is the answer. This extract is the correct ending that completes paragraph four. Complete answer with a full stop. This extract is the correct ending that completes paragraph three. One step you should do, okay, if you're not in a hurry, and I do advise you to do that because in the official exams, you have two and a half hours, which is a lot of time. Go back to the paragraph you chose, read it, and then continue reading the ending. Does it make sense? Then you have chosen correctly. If it doesn't make sense, reconsider your answer. Part E, vocabulary in context. Directions, use context clues to figure out the meanings of each word in the box, then fill in the blanks with the correct words to complete the sentence. Going on to paragraph two, we figure out that the word unfolded, how the news unfolded, revealed, okay, little by little, pervaded, Going back to paragraph two, we realize it means widespread, it's everywhere. Underscore in paragraph five means how emphasized and stressed it is. To underscore something here, uh, you need to be very careful with these, this word. That's why we need to go back to context. You know, First of all, when you take a look at underscore, you think maybe underestimate. No. When you go back to context, you see that it means emphasize and stress. Incentives is what you give people to encourage them, an incentive, like the extra credit that's given as an incentive to students to work harder. Misinformation, as we said before, is wrong information. Number one, some American newspapers usually put no ads on the first page to underscore the importance of the news. 
they are trying to emphasize the news over the ads. Number two, we keep hearing about the amount of that played out on Facebook, Google, and Twitter during the 2016 American presidential election. There was a huge problem with misinformation Okay, during those times, a lot of misinformation. Number three, Facebook has the life of global culture in a way never seen before. The speed at which news about the weather on social media made everyone extremely scared about going anywhere. Okay, um, so the answers underscore misinformation pervaded, okay, became widespread. How, how uh, Facebook, everything about Facebook, you know, has pervaded in our culture, has become so widespread, unfolded the news about the weather, how it unfolded and made everyone feel scared. Okay, like, uh, for example, the news about coronavirus, how it unfolded from day to day. So this is it for our uh, lecture today. Please join me on Zoom Live in order to discuss this further and to discuss more concepts about social media and the amount of misinformation found in those platforms. See you.